Welcome to lesson three. We're going to pick up from where we left off last time. And going forward in future lessons, we're going to work with MySQL Workbench to GUI, which most individuals prefer. Well, all of these commands can also work in the command shell as well, so just keep that in mind. We'll work with the GUI. Uh, what we'll do this today, we're going to go into the Workbench. And we're going to work a little bit more with the Secura database. So we're going to connect just like we have previously. Now that we're connected, just to recap from lesson two, we're going to use our Secura database so that we set our current session in there. And I'm going to do things potentially on purpose so you guys can see error messages. So it says unknown database secure. Now, why did that occur? Well, why that occurred was because I typed the database incorrectly. So if we go back and recap what we did in lesson two, we're going to go and do our show databases command again so that we can see what it really should be. And it's not Secura, as you noticed, and for those of you who are following along from last time, it's Sequila. So I was pronouncing it incorrectly, thus I typed it incorrectly. So it's Sequila. And then now if we update our statement, and I'll comment out the old one, we'll see now our session will be updated and our command executes successfully down below. Now that we've used it, we're going to go back to show tables. But what I'm going to demonstrate before I do that is another cool feature of Workbench. If we go back to home and if we look on the left hand navigation, do you see this little icon? This is an example of an entity relationship diagram. If you click on this, or in MySQL, it's a model or an enhanced entity relationship diagram. And there's a model already here for us. We could create one. And by creating one, which we'll do in the future, it'll allow us to create a database designed from scratch or reverse engineer an existing one. But we're going to look at Sequila Full. And what this is going to be is a rendering of the entire database of Sequila that we're going to work with as we learn the data definition link, I'm sorry, the data manipulation language, the DML statements to work with this database. So you'll see there are different categorization of objects and typically what that's noticed as is different schemas. And if we scroll in or zoom in on this, we can better see it. Uh, when we look at this clearer, you see that we have customer data, inventory, views, and business. Okay. We'll go into what views are in future lessons, but for now, we're just going to worry about the main objects Okay, that are here. Um, and you can also look at the catalog. The catalog here is tables categorized there. So that's all the table lists we saw earlier. And then views that are here. And views essentially are queries that make up a perspective of the data that somebody else might want to access in a particular way. So it could be potentially multiple tables joined together, um, which you'll learn more about um, in future lessons when we do some more query examples. But we're going to work with basic select statement examples in this lecture. And the reason I show you this now is because I want you to use this as a way to explore and visually see how your data and your elements are organized and have this at your reference. I always recommend when you start with any new database, when you're working, well, walk in an organization is you want to look for the enhanced or the entity relationship diagram. So you can see all of the entities, which are known as your database tables, their attributes or known as the columns. 
and their data types, okay, the type of data that's stored in them. And typically you're going to be working with characters, integers, you'll have date time fields, um, and a few other data types, but those are the main ones you'll see. You'll see a Boolean here, which is true or false. Um, but this lets you get a better understanding of how your data is organized and where you're going to find things. Um, if you also have a data dictionary at your discretion, that's going to be helpful too. Um, but typically, at very least, you'll have a database design. Or if you don't have one, you can use the tools to create one. Um, and that's something that you'll potentially see in a future lesson as well. But this shows us you know, where our customer data is, where our business core data is, and then a few other areas that we have in this database, okay? Um, so we saw actor earlier, so that's the columns that were in that actor table. So this we leave open, typically, or we have available to us in another window. Uh, so that when we're writing queries, you know, we can say, okay, well, we might need to get data from multiple tables. For instance, like, what movies was a particular actor in, right? Um, the way a relational database works, you'll see that while well, the actor information is stored here in the actor table, the films that the actor would be part of would be over here in the film table, but you'll notice if you follow the lines to see how things are connected, actors go to this film actor table and films go to this film actor table. And the reason that is the case is that each film is going to have many actors. Now we're not really talking about how database design is yet, but we need to understand how databases are put together. And in this case, what you'll see is these lines show that it's a one-to-many relationship. Okay, so a film must have actors and it can have one or more actors in this film actor table. And we use what's known as the keys to look up the values. And when we write a complex statement later on, we're going to see how we pull this together. So I'll actually show you that. It's called a join condition. Uh, but in this case, um, you can follow the primary key of the film table, of the film ID which is the unique identifier over to the film actor table, which is a foreign key here. You'll see that it's with a key next to it and it's red. What that tells me is that that's a foreign key. It's also part of this table's key. It's a concatenated key because you got two keys next to two fields. Actor ID is the other one. So the actor primary key you will find down here as a foreign key that references the actors. So you don't duplicate any of the main information in your table. So you don't restore actor names over in the film or in this other table. You don't restore the film information anywhere else. You use these joins or known as a bridge or an associative entity to make the connections when you write queries. And I'm going to show you that here shortly. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to just go back to our command line over here in Workbench, and we're going to write another simple query, a select statement, and we're going to just explore this slightly, and then we're going to pull that picture together um, at the end of this uh, tutorial or this lesson. Select star from actor, and if there's any doubt if it's actor or actors, again, go back over to your model, and it's actor. So we'll go back over and we're going to run that query just like you saw last time. Remind you to highlight it and hit execute. All right, you're going to see first name, last name, and last update. What we're going to do is show you how, what if we only wanted certain fields? So in SQL, instead of using the asterisk for all columns, because some tables are going to be very large, a lot of columns, and you won't need all of the columns a lot of times in your queries. Let's just say we want first name and last name, okay, from actor. And you'll notice I just specify those columns with a comma between each one that I want, okay? So first column, a comma, then the second column. So when I run this, I'm going to get just those two columns back. All the rest will be left out now because I didn't specify all of them and I didn't use the asterisk to indicate all of them. Okay, so we still get all of the results. 
Now, let's look at only specific records of information. So I can narrow this result down in many different ways in SQL. And there's 200 records, so 200 is a lot. Uh, but perhaps we're interested in a particular actor or actress, or we're wondering if there's any actresses with multiple last names, for instance. Um, and just scanning the data real quick, we see there's multiple ones with the last name of Neeson. So let's focus in on that for a minute. So we're going to add to our select statement by adding a where clause. And we're going to put where last name equals some criteria. And that criteria in this case will be Neeson. Okay, so we're going to say show me all of the actors that have the last name of Neeson. So what we did here was we put a where clause in. We said what column we wanted to specify a filter on. So we have this last name column. It's going to be equal to something. And it's equal to the value of Neeson. Now, the other thing to note here is that we have apostrophes before and after the word Neeson because it's a character data type or a string data type. So whenever we're working with character-based data types, we're going to put them inside of quotation marks, okay, a little single tick on both sides. Now, let's see what happens when we run this query. We know that we see two here, but let's see what happens when we run the query. We get two back, okay? Now, you'll note that the data here is all uppercase, and when I typed in my results, I didn't use all uppercase. Now, if you're working in an environment that's not Windows-based, and depending upon how your settings are set on your database, if this is checking case recognition, these results would not have came back because the lowercase version does not match the uppercase version. I noted that earlier in the last tutorial, I mentioned that MySQL may be case sensitive. It all depends on your environments at times and installations. With Windows, Windows tends not to be case sensitive. So the installation that ran did not care about the case sensitivity. So it allows us to come back with those results. But just keep that in mind when you're working with SQL and other databases because you may not always get the results you're anticipating. You can use some commands to compare um, this to all lowercase or uppercase and type things inconsistently. There's some built-in functions for that, just for consideration um, if you wanted to explore it later on. But let's say we got the um, first name and last name, um, and we only really cared about Jane. All right, what could we do? But well, we can add to that where clause and we can make it more complex. We can say and, let's say first name equals Jane. Same thing inside of those little quotation marks. And now we have a more specific where clause. We get the only record, all right, that belongs to Jane that's in that table, okay? Now, what's gonna be interesting is what movies has Jane played in? All right, so if we go back to our ER diagram, our EER diagram, we see that the actor ID ties to this film actor table. So let's get Jane's actor ID for a second. So we're gonna bring that in. That's one additional column. And we're gonna see that it's 62. All right, so just keep that in mind for a second. And this is where you're gonna see some of the power of SQL and the complexity as well. So if we do select star from film actor, and again, let's just double check, film underscore actor, where actor ID equals 62. Now that's an integer. We do not have to put it inside of quotation marks. So we will run this command. Let's see if Jane has been in any movies. All right. 
And luckily for us, Jane has been very popular. She's played in numerous movies. You'll see that actually 29 down here um, were returned. All right. Uh, if we were just wondering now, what are these movies? Well, it's going to be hard for us to go look all of those up if we had to say, well, select the star from, and let's see what the table would be. Film, okay. Select star from film, where film ID equals six, all right. So we see that she has 29 of these. So could you imagine running 29 statements to figure out what films Jane has played in? We see the first one is Agent Truman, okay? But we'd have to keep running statements over and over again, right? To look that up and it would be painful. Um, alternatively, we can do a couple different things in SQL. Let's go back to the one where we saw what film she was in as far as the film IDs go. Well, we could do something like this, where film ID in six comma 42 comma 54 comma 100 comma 101. We could do that 29 times. And this where clause is saying, you know, find all the film IDs that are inside of this list here. It's an in list. You could do this with integer values or character values. But if we did that, 29 values would be painful. But we could get all the films back, right? That, that would work. Uh, but it's still not ideal. Alternatively, so let's comment that one out. We could do this thing called a subquery. I'll put a comment here, um, demonstrate, demonstrate a subquery. And let's watch how this works. So we're going to use that main part of that select statement where film ID in, and we're going to write a query inside of parentheses this time. Select film ID from film actor where actor ID equals 62. And watch this. So inside of parentheses, we're going to have a query. This is a subquery. It's going to return that first list of values so that we can get this main query to work. So let's see this work. All right, so now we got all of the movies that she was in. That was, that's one way we could approach this, but still, it's very messy. And what if we wanted to see for multiple actors what movies they were in? And we know that we had to piece our data together in three different database tables. But let's try something more complex. And we will go more into detail into these in the future. But let's look at just a simple join to wrap up this lesson, the join condition. So what we're going to do, and this is a little bit more than a simple one, because we have to take pieces from each table. But let's get the actor and then the movie title. Uh, is all we're going to want. So we're going to get the select statement to say we want the actor ID, the first name, and the last name, and we're going to take these from the actor table. So we're going to specify the table name this time in front of our in front of our fields. And the reason why we're going to do this is because we're going to end up getting data from multiple tables. And then the other field we want is the film table and we want the title so the title from the film table so this select line says get me the actor id from the actor table the first name and the last name from the actor table and the title from film now we're going to say from and we're going to get it from the actor table and we're gonna to have to do some joins. We're gonna do an inner join. This is where they match, inner join. And we'll, like I said, talk more about these join statements in the future. But let's just see this work for now. We're gonna inner join this film actor table. So just like our diagram, if we're following that line, we go from actor to film actor. And we have to have a condition. Well, the condition is that 
connector, that primary key, to that foreign key. So if it's it's going to be actor dot actor ID. That's the primary key. Equals our film actor dot actor ID. Okay. That'll get us to that one table. But now we have to bridge over to the film table. So now we have to do another inner join film on. We're going to work with our and I forgot the word join. Obviously, that's why things underline. That's the nice thing about our editor. If you see an underline, something is probably wrong. And we're going to now do our film dot film ID. And we'll do the left table first. So we'll do film actor dot film ID equals our film dot film ID. All right, so this is a query that is fairly complex. We have three tables. So if we need to get data back from three tables, we need to have two joins. The rule of joins is always going to be number of tables minus one is the number of joins you need. So in this case, we have three tables involved. So we need two joins. And you'll see we have two joins, both of them being inner joins. That's where the data matches. Now, this will get us all of the actors in all the films that they're in, but let's bring our where clause, okay, in. So we'll put our where clause in. And actor ID is in multiple tables. So again, we have to specify what table we want to use. And it doesn't matter which table we technically use because we're doing an inner join. So we could do the film actor or the actor table. Either will work. But if we use neither and don't qualify our table names in front of these fields where the fields exist in more than one table, SQL is going to give us an error back of an ambiguous error. It doesn't know what we want. So let's run this correctly and hit execute. And now you'll see these are all the movies Jane Neeson played in. Okay, you'll see her name next to everyone. And we should have, in total, 29 rows. And for consistency, always check your row counts, right? So we had 29 from film actor. We did that subquery, we had 29, and now we did the joins, we had 29. So everything matched up. If something didn't match, then we'd have to question our query and see what we did wrong. But let's see what happens if we do not specify the table we want the field from in the place where we know the field overlaps. Where it doesn't, it's not gonna yell at us. But I do it just because of it's clearer to the reader of our code. Okay, so if I run this now and I took off the pre-qualifying table name and execute, remember how I said we'd get an error? That's ambiguous. It doesn't know what field. Ambiguous means it's in more than one table. I don't know which one you want it from. Okay, so if you're ever writing your SQL, you run into an error. It's always good to know what that is. So if we fix it. Again, we put that actor in front of it. We run it, and you'll see. Okay. And if you want to go back and you know get rid of and, and see what films that the other Neeson was in, or somebody, or all of the Neesons were in, we can change our where clause out. Uh, but now you can kind of see a basic of a join, and that's an understanding that you need to have when you're working with a relational database. Because in most places, in most, you're going to write a query that requires you to pull data back from multiple tables. So this is the beginning of our SQL journey. We went from a very simple select statement with a WHERE clause today. We had a field list identified. We saw how to use the IN clause. We saw a compound condition with the ANDs and we saw a subquery and then we wrapped up with a join condition that was fairly complex. So a lot covered in this brief tutorial, a little bit longer than typical for this lesson. I hope you found it helpful and we'll continue on and uh, looking forward. If you have any questions, please reach out and uh, subscribe and uh, continue on along with this training. Thank you.